the Kia Sportage is almost 30 years old and rolling into the showrooms is its fifth generation. What's hiding under the boldly designed exterior? Let's find out. This episode is brought to you by Carvago. Be smart, choose your car online with Carvago. The Kia Sportage really is almost 30 years old and from generation to generation it gets more appealing. I remember the Sportage from second generation onwards. In the second gen it was the same as the first gen Hyundai Tucson. Then the Tucson became the iX35 in Europe and it had a face only a mother could love. A year ago the fourth generation Tucson debuted and I really expected the new Kia Sportage to be largely the same parts bin with a different exterior. Yes, but fortunately there's more to it. A few years ago, Hyundai and Kia explained that they differ in that Hyundai is the mature buyer-oriented brand, whereas Kia is more youth-oriented. These days, both brands seem to one-up each other on who's going to make a bolder design statement. A year was sufficient for Kia to get something that isn't available not just on the Tucson, but also most of other competitors, and that's the Matrix LED headlights. Hyundai may have those interesting wing-looking day-running lights, but the main headlights are too weak. Kia has Matrix LEDs, and I'll talk about them later when we get out on the road. Looking for a car for family, fun or work? The best place for you is Carvago.com. Carvago is a modern platform with vetted cars from all over Europe. You can buy a car from the comfort of your home and Carvago will deliver it to your doorstep. Carvago.com features more than 700,000 cars from vetted dealers across Europe. You select a car on Carvago. Carvago sends out its experts and presents you the Car Audit, a full report on the actual condition of the car. Car Audit keeps track of 270 technical points, includes photos, as well as the final evaluation by a Carvago certified technician. Next, you simply select financing and delivery options, you sign a deal with Carvago, and Carvago buys the vetted car for you. You have 14 days after delivery to test the car and return it without giving a reason. The price also includes a six-month warranty. So, what's your car from Carvago going to be like? But we'll start with the dimensions and the practical stuff. The new Kia Sportage is just one, two centimeters longer in every aspect versus the previous generation. Small differences like this can result within the same generation on different trim levels, depending on the bumper shape. In terms of dimensions, the Sportage is close not just to the Tucson, but also to the Qashqai, the RAV4 or the Tiguan. Kia is still using its smart tailgate opening system, which is not particularly smart. Yes, it opens as you approach, but the car has to be locked. I prefer the foot under the bumper method. The boot capacity, depending on a powertrain, is officially between 526 and 591 liters in five-seat configuration. Drop the back seats in the second row and you get over 1700 liters. But some of these liters seem to be in hard to reach places. For example, this mild hybrid should have a 562 liter boot. At first glance, it's got a lot less. According to my measurements, it's about 450 liters, and that's if I'm being generous. So that's pretty much the same as in the previous generation. So what happened to the remaining 100 plus liters? I suppose they are under the floor, largely taken up by the styrofoam insert protecting the mild hybrid battery. Yes, there is some space in the insert, but a lot more could fit if you remove it completely. Also, because of the insert, you can't stow the cargo cover under the floor. But I suspect if you take a knife, cut out some of the styrofoam, it will fit. You're welcome. There are two small shopping bag hooks and levers to fold the seats. The backrest splits 40-20-40 and you can fold the middle part from the boot side as well. The boot can be closed with a button on the tailgate, but no separate button to lock the car. There is a decent amount of legroom and headroom here in the back, although that was never an issue in the previous gen. 
Now, the backrest angle is adjustable, like in the old car, and the seats are also heated. There are Isofix mounting points, obviously. Of course, there are cup holders in the armrest. Now, from second trim upwards, three-zone climate control is standard. There are USB ports here on the side seats, making it easier to access for passengers in the front. And something I overlooked in the EV6, those bumps here are actually coat hangers. Simply clever. Unfortunately, the door pockets are small, but the doors cover the sills. The Sportage cockpit is a collection of parts we've seen in new Hyundai Kia cars in recent months. Having said that, I think Kia does a better job of putting these parts together in a way that's easy to use. Starting from the left, we've got buttons for the power tailgate, ESP and the parking brake. Then comes this nice curved panel featuring two 12.3 inch displays, the virtual instrument cluster in front of the driver and the infotainment screen. I think this is a very simple and elegant implementation resembling that in the Mercedes-Benz. Under the central display is the AC radio control panel. It's something we've seen in the EV6. Now, depending on whether you want to use the radio or the AC, the panel displays different settings and the knobs have different functions. So it's either temperature or volume and tuning. I'm getting used to it, but I'm still not a fan. Below is a smartphone cubby with wireless charging as well as some USB ports. You're going to be using the USB ports for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because they require a cable connection and with the cable, it won't even fit here properly, so. I like the use of real estate on the screen where you can see your Android Auto and some basic system information. Cup holders in the Sportage are like in VW, they can be closed for more space or open for US-style XXL drinks. Next to the cup holders are the heated and ventilated seat buttons as well as the heated steering wheel button. There is also the gear selector dial and the drive off-road mode button. By the way, there's too much piano black. I picked up this test car with just 38 kilometers on the odometer, but give it a few weeks and all this is going to be covered in scratches. Storage under the armrest and the glove box are average size. The door pockets are small, especially for a family car. We'll start with my diagonal approach test. The all-wheel drive Tucson I reviewed about a year ago was a full hybrid and it had a bunch of terrain modes, snow, mud and sand. The MHEV, however, has an all-wheel drive lock button, which sort of locks the all-wheel drive system. To be honest, in eco mode, without fake locking the central diff, the Kia Sportage coped better with two opposite wheels losing traction. With the lock mode engaged, I felt the car struggled a bit more, but maybe that's just the computer overthinking the situation. The Kia Sportage has a broad, by today's standards anyway, powertrain lineup. There is the 1.6 150 horsepower turbo with a six-speed manual and no electrification. If you want a seven-speed DCT, you have to choose a mild hybrid. If all-wheel drive is your thing, you step up to a 180 horsepower mild hybrid. A full hybrid with 230 horsepower can be had with all-wheel drive or front-wheel drive and a 265 horsepower PHEV is all-wheel drive only. And there are also diesels 1.6, 115 and 136 horsepower. The more powerful variant can be had with all-wheel drive. This is a 180 horsepower mild hybrid with all-wheel drive. The claimed 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time is 9 seconds. I checked and I was even quicker in eco mode. In sport mode, I barely missed the target. Claimed fuel economy in combined cycle is 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers. And if you apply yourself, it is achievable. The Kia Sportage is okay to drive. The steering feels direct enough, even if it's only a school run hauler. At least I'm not falling asleep behind the wheel like in the RAV4 or the Tiguan. Anyway, the overzealous driver aids wouldn't let me. The lane departure warning beeps vehemently and the car keeps reminding me to keep my hands on the wheel at all times so I have to keep making those kind of micro corrections just so the car knows that I'm holding the wheel. Kia could do with capacitive sensors in the steering wheel like in the VW. 
the suspension is firm without being harsh. The car goes over potholes without any complaints. The seats are quite comfortable actually, and they have memory function and here are the beeping sounds. Anyway, on the, min on the minus side, the soundproofing could be better. I can hear enough noise around the city and when I'm on a ring road or on a road like this outside the city, there is also noticeable wind noise. An interesting feature I first saw in the new Kia Sorento is the blind spot camera system, which displays the view from wing mirror cameras. It is useful not just to avoid objects in the blind spot, but also helps you to keep those alloys away from curbs. When maneuvering, the 360 camera and the reverse cross-traffic alert also help. And the LED matrix lights I mentioned earlier. At night, you just turn the automatic high beam lights on and the car cuts out the beam to avoid other vehicles while illuminating the rest of the road. The Kia headlights are not as bright as those in some of the competitors, so it's hard to show on camera, but I'm driving with high beams on all the time and I didn't get any angry flashing from cars coming from the opposite direction. It's a great feature, worth upgrading to the top two trim levels. Prices of the Kia Sportage start at €27,790 for the Edition 7 1.6 front-wheel drive manual, a mid-spec mild hybrid will set you back around 40 grand, especially if you want all-wheel drive. Germany doesn't seem to get the full hybrid, which in my opinion is the best choice. PHEV will set you back at least 44,000, quickly approaching 50 grand if you want more goodies from the options list. That's still better than a front-wheel drive only Tiguan e-hybrid and cheaper than the RAV4 plug-in. Again, Kia approves. It has everything you need while maintaining a reasonable price and an interesting appearance. If you're looking for a compact crossover, the Sportage should definitely be on your test drive list. And once you test drive the new Sportage, drop me a comment what you think about it. Also, if you don't drive it, you can also ride something. Why not? If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.